things eternal. You ought to hold, hold to God's unchanging hand. Oh, this hold. of our pastor, Bishop Charles L. Smith. Can we receive him by saying praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. In our Sunday scripture text that we're going to preach from is John chapter 15, verse 4 and verse 5. Verse 4 says, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, and no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Closing statement, for without me, without me, not your pastor, not the one that's preaching today, but without Jesus, you can do nothing. Y'all believe that today? Have you stopped trying to do it on your own? <laughs> Have you give up on how much education you have? Have you give up on how many times you've won X number of victories? Hallelujah. And said, Lord, I can't handle it. I need you to help me to handle it so we can get through this difficult time in our life. Hallelujah. Jesus was talking to his disciples um, before his crucifixion, 
And this is the only place in the Bible where he talks to them and gives them his most personal instruction. Amen. And he's talking to them, first of all, about themselves. He's telling them, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be afraid. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house, there are many men. And he has a lot of personal things that he's telling them. And I picture him in chapter 15 as being a father who is talking to his children and telling them their last orders that I want you to remember before I go on. Hallelujah. He said, my father, my eternal spirit is the husbandman. Hallelujah. He's the farmer. He owns everything. He owns the land. He owns the crops. He is the caretaker for the crops. He is the one who looks out for the crops. He's the one who has planted the vineyard. He is the one who cares for the vineyard. Amen. But I'm only the true vine. Hallelujah. Now, so well, how could God separate himself into so many different offices and things that, amen, he does? He's one God, but he has many, many faces. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said, don't look at me, but look at God. God is the husbandman. God is the farmer. When he goes through where the vines are, he checks all the vines to see if they are bringing forth fruit. Hallelujah. And if they're not bringing forth fruit, he said that, he takes them away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He will not let this vine take up a lot of ground and even take strength out of the ground or maybe change the composition of the ground so that it doesn't bring forth any more fruit at all. Hallelujah. But if they are not bringing forth fruit, God takes them away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because every branch, every vine needs to bring forth fruit. Hallelujah. And if he finds a branch that not making fruit, first of all, he purges the branch. He gets rid of all the ones that are not making fruit so the ones that are making fruit can survive. And he burns up those things, those little, the old people used to call them them suckers off the tomato plant. Hallelujah. Now you know what I'm talking about. Because they're non-productive. They will never ever help out the farmer to sell his goods because they are not fruitful. They are not producing anything. Hallelujah. And when God looks at the church, he sees the church the same way. Non-productive people have to be purged first. They have to have some more manure put on them and fertilizer. But I came to tell you today, if you are not producing the fruits of righteousness or the fruits of the Spirit, you are in danger of being cut off. Hallelujah. 
Uh, don't say that, Elder. Don't say that. Well, he'll cut me off if I don't. <laughs> if I decide I don't want to preach no more, I'm cut off. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because he has called me to be a pastor. And he's called me to be a minister. He's called me to be the pastor of Zion Temple, First Pentecostal Church. Hallelujah. And if I get kind of sassy with him and tell him I ain't going to do that no more, I'm cutting off my own throat. Hallelujah. Because God don't play he says, cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? Cut those vines off because they're not producing anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he will purge them. He will send tests and trials. He will send adversity against individuals who are non-productive. Hallelujah. He will try to get them to realize that they need to bring forth fruit. He will refine them before the fuller soul. Hallelujah. He will cut off what is wrong. He will cut them until they're wounded if he can save them from destruction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. God is merciful. God is kind. But he is the true amen husbandman of the vineyard. Verse 3, he said, Now are ye clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Hallelujah. They were cleansed by the word. They were purified by the word. People don't know how strong the word is, but if you hear a word from the Lord and you know that belongs to you and you know what he's talking about and you, even maybe the preacher don't know, but you know what that means. Hallelujah. 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 If you want to be clean, if you want to be productive, if you want to bring forth fruit, you have to be purged. You have to be cleansed by the word. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus said he was the true vine. Hallelujah. There might have been a lot of other vines around, but he is the only true vine. Hallelujah. Then in number two in our um, live streaming is we are the branches. Hallelujah. Every one of you in here is a branch. Everybody behind me is a branch. Hallelujah. But the branch by itself is ineffective. Amen. If you're working independently, you need to get connected with the true vine. Hallelujah. Because when we work independently, it's not, hallelujah, going to go anywhere because the life and sustenance of the limb or of the branch comes from the tree itself. That's why you can't trim trees at a certain time because you'll take the life out of the tree. But in order to survive, in order to have life, there has to be a flow of life coming out of the vine and into the branch. Hallelujah. And I was amazed by this particular verse 4 because he says three times 
abide in me. Hallelujah. And I in you. In my Bible, that's a period. Hallelujah. I'm asking you to abide in me and let me, let me abide in you. Hallelujah. Period. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, hallelujah, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. Hallelujah. You need me. <laughs> You can't survive without me. If you're trying to live without the Lord, you're having a problem. If you're trying to live holy on your own, hallelujah, initiative, your own moral values, your own goodness, your own righteousness, hallelujah, it's futile for you to try to do that because we depend upon God. Hallelujah. 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 He said, you cannot abide by yourself. Hallelujah. No, I like words. I like words. Hallelujah. I guess I'm a word a words person. Hallelujah. The word abide is number thirty three oh six, and it is spelled M E N O. It is pronounced manio, which means you have to stay in a given place. You have to stay in a given relationship. And you have to be present, you have to remain, and you have to dwell. Hallelujah. If you're going to abide in him, and he is going to abide in you. Hallelujah. You have to stay where you are and remain connected to Jesus Christ. Got it? You can't drift away and I'm going to leave for a while and then I'm coming back and when I come back, it's going to be good. No, he's saying stay where you are. Don't think about leaving Zion. Don't think about, oh, maybe I should go to another church. No, God put you here. <laughs> yes, they might be teaching and preaching the same doctrine, but that's not the place where the Lord put you. We got a lot of churches in Cincinnati, but hallelujah, there are certain people that belong to this church and need to stay in this church. <laughs> well, they're going to backslide if they, if they go over there. No, I'm not saying that. But you have to have a solid foundation for your saved life. If they are not preaching apostolic doctrine, that's one thing that will take you down. If they are not preaching and teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, if everything is praise and nothing is word, you're going the wrong direction. 
You want a well-balanced church. Yes, the praise team will get up. Yes, the choir will get up. But after that is over and after our Sunday school lesson has been taught, take me to the sanctuary so I can hear what thus saith the Lord. I want direction. I want to know which way to go. I want to know what Christ's mind is for me. I don't want to take my mind and think I know it all and I don't need nothing else. I need Jesus. You need Jesus. We all need Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he said, if you don't abide in me and I abide in you, you, you can't do nothing. You can't preach. You can't sing. You can't teach Sunday school. You can't even control your own life without the Lord. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. When I start thinking crazy things, it's Jesus that puts me back on solid ground. Woo. I feel like preaching today. Ah, son of the Lord, bo to bo Lord, don't let me drift away. Start thinking crazy stuff. Start believing that I was wrong all along and I should be doing this instead of that. But if God saved you in Zion, stay in Zion. If God brought you to Zion, Stay in Zion if God gave you the Holy Ghost here. If you have lived and been here for a number of years, this is the place where you belong. The grass always looks greener on the other side. Oh, they got all kind of programs. Oh, they got all kind of stuff going on. But are they feeding you? Are you getting your regular meal or are you just getting a fancy praise and worship service and a big offering? Hallelujah. Got to stay here. You got to stay here. I know you can't put chains on people and tell them you got to stay in Zion. If they see something that looks a little bit better, they're going to drift over there and see if it is better. But I'm telling you today, Jesus said to you, through me, abide in me, and I in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For he that abideth in me and I abide in him. He'll bring forth much fruit. Hallelujah. Why will he bring forth fruit? Because it's in him? No, it's in the Lord. Do you think people preach real good because of them? They preach because of the Lord. They preach because of the anointing. They preach because they fast and pray. They preach because they live and breathe Jesus Christ in their lives. Every time I breathe, I think about him. Every time I move, I think about him. Every time I get up, I think about him. When I go to bed, I think about him. Hallelujah. 
We must abide in Christ. We must stay in a given state, stay in a given place, stay in a given relationship. We must continue. We must be present. We must remain. And we have to dwell in the vine. Because we are only the branches. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't God wonderful? You can clap for him. I ain't going to stop you from clapping. <laughs> Our second scripture that goes with that is Philippians chapter 1, verse 11. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 1, verse 11 says, You branches, you, you branches that's connected to the vine, we should be filled, filled with the fruits of righteousness. When somebody looks at our vine and looks at us hanging on the vine, they should see the fruits of righteousness. Now you may want to connect Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23 with that, but this is the only place where it calls, it's not, doesn't call it the fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. But this is the only place that I could find where there are actual fruits of righteousness. And the way the Lord showed it to me that we manifest the fruit of the Spirit because we're filled with the Holy Ghost, but we live a holy life because we are filled with the fruits of righteousness. Y'all, get your theology out and work on it. <laughs> get your PhDs together and work on this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, those are produced by the Holy Ghost that is in us. The fruits of righteousness are produced by our relationship with the vine. Uh, hallelujah. No relationship, no righteousness. We got to walk holy and live holy. And we have to live a life, church, that is before God, that manifests and glorifies God. He said, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by, B-Y, Jesus Christ. Not by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> So they're the same thing. No, they ain't. No, they ain't. One is a different manifestation from the other. We cannot produce the fruit of the Spirit unless we have the Spirit. Y'all ever heard of producing fruit without the Spirit? 
And we can't live right unless we are led and guided and fed and instructed and helped and he, hallelujah, guided by the vine. There goes a child of God. Not there goes a meek person, there goes a mild person. But there goes an example of righteousness. I've known them for years, and they have walked with God in the beauty of holiness. I've never seen nothing bad out of them. You could trust them. They would never steal from you. They would never lie on you. They would never tear your reputation down. They're not that kind of people. They are hooked to the vine. The same way Jesus is, that's the way they are. Humble people, quiet people, meek people, loving people, gentle people. You could lay $5,000 down in front of them and they wouldn't even touch it because the Bible said, thou shalt not steal. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Number three in our high points in the message is the title or subject of the sermon. Now, I've never did this before, but wherever you got subject written on your notes, this is the, this is the title of this message. This message is titled, The Power of Unity. The Power of Unity. That little space, you know, where you had subject and he didn't say the subject. Pastor always says the subject after he says the, the scripture thing. Nah, fooled you today. <laughs> it is called the power of unity, not with each other, but with Jesus Christ. It's not hooking up with each other and we all get one mind and one objective and one goal and we go forth. But everything that is done in this scenario or in this setting is orchestrated by Jesus himself. You know what I'm talking about? You can get in a spiritual condition where you're being led by Jesus, guided by Jesus, move everywhere you go. You want to say what the Lord says. You want to do what the Lord wants you to do. Lord, don't let my mind get into all this stuff. What is your mind? What is your will? What do you want done? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John chapter 5. These are the scriptures. John 5, 15, 5b, and 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. This is the last part of verse 5. He said, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, bringeth forth much fruit. Colon. Same subject, but with a keynote in it. For without me, without my help, without my guidance, Without my influence, you'll have the dunamis power, but you will need Jesus 
to work with you. You will have the exclusive power to become a son of God, but Jesus still has to work with you. He didn't fill nobody with the Holy Ghost and set them out on their self. He said, abide in me and let me abide in you. Let's work this thing together. Whatever you need, let me tell you, whatever I want you to do, please obey me and do it. And you'll bring forth much fruit. You'll bring forth the fruit of the Spirit, and you'll bring forth the fruit of righteousness. But don't try to go out on your own. Don't try to figure all this out just because you got a little blessing, just because God gave you and put you in charge of a certain thing. Don't think you're out there on your own. Lean on him when you're not strong. Lean on him when you don't know what to do. Lean on him when your mind is thinking crazy things. Hallelujah. For without me, ye can do nothing. We need the power of unity to be with Jesus Christ. We need a relationship. Not me, 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 I, 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 but us. Lord, how shall we proceed? with the situation. I know you're going to help me. I know you're a healer. I know you're a deliverer. But Lord, I can't figure all this out. Pour into me the gift of life. Pour into me the intellect that I need. Give me the right direction. Is it right? Is it left? Is it stay where I'm at? Or should I go ahead? Because I don't want to make a mistake and miss out on your plan for my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For without me, ye can do nothing. You have to be hooked up, tied up, and abiding in Jesus Christ in order to be spiritually successful. By yourself, you'll never make it. Putting Jesus on the side, you'll never make it. Well, I don't need the Lord. I know how to do this. And I think sometimes we should just take a time out and say, I don't know how to do this. I don't know who I'm preaching to. I'm preaching. This is the message the Lord gave me here. We need the power of unity with Jesus Christ. We need to have one language. We need to have one people. We need to have one objective. We need to have one plan, not six and seven plans. We need one plan. Where the Lord is controlling the situation. We're not calling in a seminar speaker to get us on track, but we're listening for the voice of Jesus Christ. Lord, let me hear today what I'm supposed to hear. Let me hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Let me hear what you want me to hear. 
If I'm doing good, encourage me. But if I'm not doing the right thing, pull me back and say you need to be doing this instead of this. We need him. We need to connect ourselves with Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know why I'm talking like this. But I got about 10 more minutes, but I don't know why I'm talking like this. You say the pastor done went, wow. No, I ain't went wow. I'm still, I still got my good senses. I ain't went crazy. He done went off on a tangent. No, I ain't went off on no tangent. I'm saying this as God's spokesman as his representative. We've been trying to do stuff on our own too long. And it's time to hook up with the vine. It's time to unite ourselves with the one who knows everything about everything. power of unity with Christ. Second scripture is 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Not when I'm strong. Not when I know, I know, I know what to do. Hmm. I know what the next move is, but when I am weak, the devil is trying to beat me up and make me think funny things. Lord, I got a thorn in my flesh. And every time I get ready to do something, it sticks me. I wish you would take it away. I wish you would get rid of it for me. But every time I ask you, I've asked you three times. Take it away, Lord. But God said, my grace, my grace, my grace, my enabling grace, my, I can take you through anything grace. Ah, hallelujah. It's sufficient. I have an abundant supply of grace. My grace will never run out. I'm able to help you in the time of need. And when you feel so low that you feel like I can't go on and I can't make it and this thing is going to destroy me, I've got some grace that will pick you up, turn you around, and set your little feet on solid ground. My grace. 
is sufficient for thee. For my grace is made complete in times of weakness. Hallelujah. Is God weak? No. We're weak. Is God ready to give up? No, he's ready to help us. All you have to do is come boldly to the throne of grace. Come to the place of grace. Come to the throne of grace. And you'll find grace to help you in the time of need. But I'm not going to send somebody out and say, tell them, follow me and I'll take you to the throne of grace. I'm waiting on you. Hallelujah. To come to the throne of grace. When Paul heard those words, he gave up asking the Lord to take it away. <laughs> he resolved within himself that if God has enabling grace that is strong enough to take me through and every time the thorn jabs me, he gives me enough grace to stand the pain. <sighs> Therefore, I will glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ, the true vine, will rest on me. Hallelujah. 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 For when then in verse 10, we don't have 10 on the live streaming, but 10 said, therefore, I take pleasure <laughs> right there. What's wrong with Paul? I can make it, not because I'm who I am, not because I know what I know, not because I'm strong, I'm a strong saint. But I can make it if the enabling grace of God helps me, and if the power of Christ rests on me, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I take pleasure in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then, then, T-H-E-N, am I strong. How you get so strong? It's a paradox. How can you be weak and strong at the same time? I'm weak and weary of the thorn that's in the flesh, but the enabling grace of God, the power of Christ that comes on me, that helps me to endure it, and helps me go through the pain, and helps me to go day by day without murmuring and complaining. Oh, hallelujah. I'm strong. I'm able to endure everything that comes against my soul and still be standing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I must move on. I got five minutes left now. Hallelujah. Number four is stay connected with Christ. We're going to go through 
three scriptures. You can write them down for your reference. Mark 16, 19 through 20. Acts 5 and 12. And Hebrews 2 and 4. We are only going to read these. Okay? As I want to get to the last point in this message. All right, turn in your Bible to Mark chapter 16, verse 19 and 20. 19 said, after then, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere and these are the key words, the Lord working with them and confirming the word that they spoke with signs and wonders following. Amen. They didn't go out on their own. The Lord went with them. The Lord went with them. The Lord went with them. I'm out here all by myself. Ain't nobody knows what I'm going through. No, the Lord went with them. <laughs> I wish somebody would help me out. He's right there. He's a very present help in the time or something. I said I wasn't going to preach no more. Acts 5 and 12. By the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. The Lord went with them. The Lord went with them. He didn't call them, leave them, go to heaven. Acts 1 and 9, he went with them. His spirit went with them. The spirit of Christ overshadowed them. The people thought they were doing miracles and all of these things on their own. But it was the Lord. I said it was the Lord that was helping them to do it. Hallelujah. Now, anybody that thinks their gift is so good and so strong that I did it, I did it, I did it, you already shot yourself in the foot. Because you, you got to abide in the vine, and the vine has to abide in you. For without Christ, we can't do nothing. We cannot accomplish anything without hooking up with Christ. The power of our unity with Christ is what's going to give us the success. Amen. Hebrews 2 and 4. God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles, gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. The Lord, even though he was in heaven, standing at the right hand of the throne of God, he went with them, and he helped them. In my conclusion, I think I don't preached quite a bit today. <laughs> but I'm telling you the truth. The Lord loads me up with, with tons, tons and tons of stuff to tell you. But then when I get ready to tell you always, I had prayer in the office before I came out. Lord, you say what you want to say. I did study, I studied about three or four hours yesterday, got all my notes and all my 
you know, my words that I didn't know and the words that I did know, and I wanted to refresh myself, went through all of that. Stayed up to 11 o'clock at night before I went to bed, making sure I got my hermeneutics correct. <laughs> but I did. I, I'm being honest. Lord, we'll throw all that away if you got something else. So most of what you've heard today came from the Lord since I came out of the office. <laughs> ah, Lord. I'm listening to him too. I said, wow, boy, you're amazing. <laughs> All right, the last uh, one you should write in your notes is uh, use Jesus' name. This is very important. Use Jesus' name. And the scripture is Colossians 3.17. And it simply says, Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Amen. Use the name. Now that's another whole sermon by itself. But if you are praying, end all of your prayers in Jesus' name. If you're asking him for something, say what you want to say and make your request known unto him, but say in Jesus' name. When you lay hands on the sick and ask God to heal them, end your prayer in Jesus' name. Whatever you do, whatever I do, whatever we do, do it all in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, Elder, why do we have to be so specific? Because everything, everything is flowing, is flowing through him. The word by means it's flowing through him. The word through means it's flowing through him. Jesus is, hallelujah, the one, his name usually is left out, but he wants his name included because Jesus is the one who paid the sacrifice, who gave his life as a ransom for us. Out of thankfulness, use his name. Out of honor, use his name because the power is in the name of Jesus.